Welcome back. We're starting second semester. I'm not sure where you guys are at, but we're going to start unit six, inference of categorical data with proportions. I'm breaking this down into two parts because if you're in the sixth edition or newer of the practice of statistics, it is chapters eight and nine, I believe. For us, with the Flamingo fifth copy, it's a little bit of chapters eight and then not eight and ten, and I think nine and ten. So anyway, with all that being said, let's just jump right into it. So the setup here, and again, if you want, before I forget, all the notes are down below. And like, subscribe, comment, all that other good stuff. Otherwise, I'll delete your first semester grades. Um, and just kidding. That's a rip off of Mr. Beast to any administration who might be watching. So anyway, um, guess the mystery proportion. I want to implement a new reward system. When a student does something great, I'll randomly pick a bead out of a jar. And if it's red, they get a piece of candy. And if it's not red, then they don't win a prize. Certainly sounds like a good way to do things. It's kind of fun. The question is, what are the chances that a student gets a red bead? Each group will get a sample set of beads, create a confidence interval, blah, 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 blah. Okay, what's a confidence interval? Don't worry, we'll walk you through it. And again, like I said at the end of the last chapter, these next sets of units are going to be extremely critical to everything that we do. And it will give you a whole different perception in terms of how you see statistics that are given in the news, et cetera. So you're going to go through and you're going to select a random sample, 20 beads from the jar, calculate the proportion of the beads that was read, and you're going to write this as a decimal. Now remember, we're doing proportions, so that means you're going to do everything as decimals. All right. So for example, let's say we went through and we got 7 out of 20. Okay, great. That's equal to 35, 0.35, 35%. That is your point estimate for the true proportion of red beads. Okay, now let's go through and we'll talk about this. Now, population, you should know, right? Okay, it's going to be all the beads in the jar. If I could spell jar. So then what's your sample? Oh, that's my 20 beads from the jar. So then what is your parameter? It says nothing up here about your population, right? Our statistic we know, okay, that's going to be p hat. So actually, let's even put that up here just for practice. p hat is 35%. Okay. So the parameter, I don't know. And that is actually, this is one of those ideas of stuff that you actually use statistics for. You don't know what the population is. You don't know what the parameters are. So we're going to try to come up with something that is going to estimate what the parameter is. Okay. In fact, okay, this, let's even just call that that. That's going to be a point estimate. Okay. This up over here, whatever this turns out to be, that's going to be P. That is our true proportion of red beads. So now we're going to change the point estimate into an interval of values by adding and subtracting some numbers to them. So we're going to kind of give them a range. We're going to say, all right, how much should we add and subtract to this? So think about what you would do and saying, all right, and this is going to be called margin of error. How much should we go? How much above and below should we go through and do that? Okay. Now, if you looked at anything from like, you know, recent elections and stuff, sometimes they'll say it's like, you know, so-and-so has... 35% approval rating plus or minus 5%. Okay, that plus or minus 5% is the margin of error that we're talking about. So think about what would be appropriate to use. Now, let's just for sake of ease say we're going to go plus or minus 10%. Okay, 0 0.10. Okay. Why does that make sense? Well, how many red beads is 10% going to be? So if we get 7 out of 20, if we go 2 above and 2 below, that would give us kind of like between 5 and 9. So that'd be about 10%. Okay, so we're going to say that's only two red beads. Which seems good. All right, now, and again, you know, you may or may not have had, okay, maybe we go less than that, maybe you have more than that, but that's fine. So now, and again, it's always going to be plus or minus the same amount. 
Okay, you can't go, well, I'm going to go up by 10 and down by 5. It has to be the same amount. Um, so right here, and again, we want the smallest interval that captures the truth is the winner. Okay, so you guys would be doing this all in your separate groups. So you'd be like, well, you know, obviously I could go, well, if you wanted to be safe, you could go plus or minus 35%. But that's going to give you a really, really big one. You want to try to get through it. So then what they ask, what we ask you to do is this, is um, use your point estimate and choose the margin of error to write the interval that you think contains the true proportion of beads. So you're going to take this 35%, and just like you would see in like elections or, you know, survey polls or something like that. So it's going to be 35% plus or minus 10%. So that would give us anywhere from 25 to 45. Okay. And so what we're doing here is that we're going to take the point estimate plus or minus our margin of error. So again, I mean, it's just, you've done it with the quadratic formula. You know how the plus or minus works. We'll just kind of go through all that, right? So that means that we think that the true proportion of red beads in the jar is here. And the reason why we're doing proportions is because since we're only taking 20 out, we don't know how many beads there are in the jar. So we just have to say, okay, we're going to take what percentage of the beads are red. How confident do you feel that the interval captures the true proportion? Answer with the percentage. So then again, you would go through and say, okay, are you 90% sure that the numbers that you picked would include that? Include the true proportion out of that book jar? Are you 95%? Are you 91%? Are you 75% sure? And that's what you're going to answer here. Okay. So maybe you would say, okay, 90%. Now, the way in statistics that we go through and we make it sound really, really important, and actually, this is this phrase here you're going to say numerous times and you're going to write at least once on the AP exam, I would almost guarantee you, is something to the lines of this. We are blank percent confident. That the interval spell interval from low to high captures the true proportion of red beads in the jar. Okay, so for us in this context, we would say, okay, we are 90% confident that the interval from 0.25 to 0.45 captures the true proportion of red beads in the jar. Now, again, and this is really, really important, and we're going to have this drummed into your head over the next couple of days. This is not saying 95% of the proportions are going to fall between these two numbers. You're saying what we're doing here, if we follow this thing over and over and over again, it's going to capture, we're 95%, we're 90 percent confidence in this case, that this one contains the true proportion. The true proportion of the beads in the jar don't change. Our samples are going to change, and so this confidence interval can move around, but we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Now, one of the groups here got 20, 0.27 and 0.33 as the interval. What was their point estimate? What was their margin of error? Some of you are probably already kind of figuring out, it's like, well, it's right in the middle. It's going to be 0 0.30. And it's true. That's what's going to happen. Now, it's going to be also good to remember that there is a formula for this. And again, not that it's terribly hard and not that it's going to be necessarily impossible to do it. But I say this because occasionally you're going to get variables in the place of this. Okay. And so you may need to do something like this to work it backwards. So you're going to get that. All right, your margin of error then is how much am I moving from the 30 to get to the 27, 33. Now, the full formula for that is I'm going to take the high value minus the low value and divide that by 2, okay, 0 0.03. 
Okay, and we'll give you some more generic formulas over on the next page. And then last but not least, one group claims the true proportion of red species is 0.25. Does your interval support or deny this claim and why? So our interval back up over here does contain that. So we're okay. This other group doesn't have it. So they're not okay. However, let's say, for example, they had a 90% confidence interval, okay? If they, were, if they had a 90% confidence interval, that means that 90% of the time when you take a sample, it's going to fall between 0.27 and 0.33. So what happens the other 10% of the time? It doesn't fall in between there, okay? So if they keep on doing this over and over and over again, and you get the occasional one outside your confidence interval, that's fine. But again, we'll kind of play around with it a little bit more as we go. So anyway, so for us, yes, my interval contains it. Zero point two five. Okay. So again, here, confidence interval contains all plausible values. Which values make sense for what we're seeing? Okay. So, for example, especially after we get a lot more samples in here, let's say everybody's getting anywhere between, you know, between 20 and 40. Okay, great. That means that having a confidence interval that goes all the way up to 55 isn't going to be plausible. It doesn't make sense. Okay? And so we're going to formalize this more as we go. But for now, I think you have just a nice little taste of what confidence intervals are. So I'm going to close this one out. We're going to go formalize everything here in a second. We'll talk to you soon.